Hello, I'm Nina Kaufman from AskTheBusinessLawyer.com, and I'm here at the New York Times Small Business Summit with Melinda Emerson. Melinda is a small business consultant, speaker, author of Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months. So thanks for joining us, Melinda. I'm so happy to be here with you, Nina. Melinda is going to be speaking today on a small business brain trust. So Melinda, can you give us a couple of tips about why that's so important for small business owners? Well, every small business owner needs a team, whether they can afford it or not. I call this group of people a kitchen cabinet of advice. And basically, it's four to five people who are already invested in your success as a small business owner. So the first person in this group should be somebody who is already an entrepreneur, somebody who's been there, done that, and can help you sidestep some of the you know potholes that are out here waiting for you in business. The second person should be someone who is doing business with, it, with you or could. So you can get that insider information on what that budget really is so that you know how to position yourself well to close that contract. The third person should be someone who actually is a mentor to you already. Already. Someone who is already advising you, maybe in an informal capacity, make it formal. Ask them to be in your kitchen cabinet. And the fourth and fifth person in your kitchen cabinet of advisors should be an accountant and a lawyer, Nina. So I'm Yay. all the people in your life are <laughs> got to be hitting you up for free legal advice. And the reason why I call this group of people a kitchen cabinet of advisors is because these people will work for food, right? They're not looking for you to, you know, they're not going to send you a bill when you call them and ask them for a question. But you got to be careful with this group of people because you want to make sure that you use them effectively. Don't call them for something you could look up on the internet. And listen, if they give you advice, you better take it because you could burn a relationship as fast as you can build one. So that's why I think every small business owner should have a brain trust or what I call a kitchen cabinet of advisors for their small business. Well, that's great. And you touched on something you mentioned, invested in their success. So did I hear you right that you shouldn't expect or have to pay them necessarily to serve on your board? I don't think initially your kitchen cabinet advisor is not a group of people that you pay. I think, you know, if you get a board of directors for your company, you pay those people. But board Boards of advisors are different. Those are people that are unpaid, who are just giving you advice because they love you, they're invested in your business, and they want to see you be successful. Great. And one last question. You have a personal mission to end small business failure. What would you say is the top cause of small business failure, and how can entrepreneurs prevent that? Okay. Now, you know I can't just give you one, right? Uh. I, there are five <laughs> reasons why small businesses fail. The number one reason is because people don't think about what their life is going to be like running their business. They have what I call fantasies of grandeur about running a small business, right? The second reason why small businesses fail is because people have no network to sell to. You know, 90% of all small businesses get business referrals, and it's astonishing to me how often people with no friends will start business, right? <laughs> <laughs> the third reason why small businesses fail is because people don't save enough money before they start their business. Listen, it takes 18 to 36 months for a small business to break even, let alone replace someone's corporate salary. So you have to save money before you start your business in order for your business to be successful. And the fourth reason is because people chase anybody that they think has money, as opposed to having a specific niche target customer. Oh, you mean like having a pulse does not count as a target market? No, 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 no absolutely not. And this is the fifth reason. Reason, and this is the deadliest reason, Nina. If you don't manage your household with a budget, you're not going to manage your business with one. And successful businesses are run based on up-to-date financial information. Mm -hmm. You should know by the 15th of the month how well your business did last month so you can adjust. Don't let your margin or your profits or your not so many profits be a surprise to you. You should know that going in and understand what all of your costs are so that when you make a sale, you're actually making money. Great. Well, thanks for your time today, Melinda. If people wanted to find out more about you, where should they go? Well, my blog is succeedisyourownboss.com, but I'm the small biz lady on Twitter and on Facebook. And every Wednesday night from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern, I host Small Biz Chat live on Twitter, where I answer your small business questions. Terrific. Thanks so much for joining us, Melinda. Again, Nina Kaufman from AskTheBusinessLawyer.com.